In the last video, I explained to you guys how electricity flows in an automotive circuit. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to wire up switches and relays. If you guys notice right here on the bench, you guys will see three different types of switches. The one that you guys might be able to point out is the one that doesn't actually look like a switch. It looks like this button right here. And this is actually also called a switch. What this switch is called, it's a momentary switch, which means that it only transfers power so long as a button is being held. Other examples of a momentary type switch is that when you're driving up on the highway and your headlights are off, you can go ahead and flash your high beams at the other person, but only as long as that lever is pressed, the high beams are being turned on. As soon as you let that go, the high beams turn off. That switch and this switch in my hand are both the same type of switch. This one just happens to look like a button. The one on the left is one that most people are familiar with. This is actually called a toggle switch. So you can go ahead and bump it up or bump it down depending on what you want it to do. Sometimes it's got spade connectors on the bottom, sometimes it's got screwing connectors on the bottom, but so long as you have it on the off or the off position, that's where it's going to stay. Another switch that's very similar to this is called a rotary switch, which is this guy right here. It doesn't necessarily have an on or an off right here printed on it. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. And the only way you can know if it's on or off is by actually turning it. So I'm grabbing the base from right here and then you can go ahead and turn the red dial and that will go ahead and click on or it'll click off. Since we have a live battery right here, just like we did in the last video, I can go ahead and demonstrate how this momentary switch would work in action. So I have the positive wire right here. I'm gonna go ahead and connect that to either side of the switch. As you guys saw in the last video, electricity doesn't know what way it's flowing. It only knows that it has to flow from positive to negative. So in the case of this switch, it doesn't matter if it's on the positive side of the switch or the quote unquote negative side of the switch because it doesn't necessarily have one. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these ground cables, which is actually the positive side of a headlight, and then the headlight is grounded directly to the battery. So if I go ahead and plug this in into the positive side, and then push the button, you guys can see that so long as I'm pushing the button, the headlight is staying on. But as soon as I let go of the button, the headlight turns off immediately. Just like I demonstrated with the momentary switch, we're gonna do the same thing to the toggle switch. We're gonna go positive and now negative, which like I mentioned before, it doesn't actually matter because the switch does not know positive and negative. It is set to the off position right now, and we're gonna go ahead and toggle it on, and it's on. So as long as the toggle stays in the on position, it's going to stay on. Just like I did with the other two switches, let's go ahead and wire this up and demonstrate how this guy works. I've got this guy wired up, so let's go ahead and turn it on. Just like we did with the toggle switch, as long as this thing is turned to the on position, the headlight is going to stay on. So really there's two reasons why you would wanna pick one over the other one. And the first one is for fitment. If you don't have enough room or you don't want something to stick out or you don't wanna be caught on something, a rotary style switch is something you'd probably wanna go with. Somewhere where you don't really have a lot of access to turn this guy, or if the material that you're working on doesn't really like being turned, then you would wanna go with a toggle switch. And then the last reason is just for aesthetics. If you like the way a rotary switch works, then you can go ahead and use a rotary switch. If you like the way a toggle switch works, then you can go ahead and use a toggle switch. If you wanted to locate a switch on a diagram, or if you wanted to draw your own diagram and you wanted to indicate that you had a switch, this is what you would do. So you would have your battery. We have six cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, positive, negative. This one goes to the negative side. This little tree looking thing, like we said before, is the negative side of the circuit. On the positive side, that will continue. Usually, you will have a fuse in line somewhere in the circuit, but it's definitely possible to not have a fuse in the circuit. It's not mandatory, but it is always recommended. Continuing the circuit, we are going into the switch itself. You can easily draw a switch by putting a dot here, followed by a space, and then another dot, and then continuing on the circuit. Then what you would do is you would draw a little lever, point it up or point it down, depending on what you were drawing, and then you could put in a dotted line that goes down like this. You could finish it off by either drawing it in a square or drawing it in a circle. I usually like to draw it in a circle. Then the circuit would continue and then it would go into a load, in which case this is a light bulb. So like we said in the last video, this is how you draw a light bulb and then you're gonna draw another circle. Then after you go past your load, you're gonna go ahead and draw the ground symbol and now you've got a complete circuit. You have the battery, you have the optional fuse, you have your switch itself, you have a load, and then you have a ground. If you install a switch 
and the switch doesn't have a load on the back side of it and it goes straight to ground, you're going to create a short and you're gonna burn up your wiring. A switch does not have any kind of resistance value that'll soak up the 12 volts coming out of the battery. You always have to have a switch before or after a load. Let me explain that second part. Suppose that we're drawing the same circuit you have positive, negative, you have the negative here, this continues on, you go into your fuse, just like we did before, only instead of going into the switch, we're gonna go right into a light bulb, and then on the ground side, we're gonna go ahead and include a switch, and then you have your circle for your switch, and then you have your ground. Can you do this is the question, and the answer is yes. A switch doesn't know if it's on the positive side of the circuit or on the negative side of the circuit. The switches that you commonly see in this configuration are switches that are grounded through the body itself, such as a door switch or a seatbelt alarm. When you open the door, the circuit is actually closed and you're running power through the light bulb all the way down to the ground. When you close the door, the switch then becomes open and then you still have power at the light bulb, but you can't turn on that light bulb without a ground. What's cool about circuits like this is that if you have multiple doors, you can go ahead and wire a second or a third switch and it will operate the exact same way. So we added a second switch right here. So it doesn't matter if you open this door or open that door, regardless of what door you open, this light is going to turn on. And this is something that you'll see that's very common in both old school and new school vehicles. As you guys might have already guessed, the only drawback is that this light always has power. So if you're not paying attention and you try to splice into it or you cut it or you pinch it, this is going to have live power. Luckily, if you have a fuse going to it, in case you accidentally short the circuit before going to the light, the fuse should protect everything. But if you don't have a fuse, it's not uncommon that somebody pinches this wire and then shorts itself to the ground and then eventually it can cause a fire. So you have to be very careful of how you set these circuits up. If you want to identify a momentary style switch, this is how you would do it. You would go ahead and draw out the same battery like we've been doing. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a battery right here. We got the positive, we got the negative negative going to the little tree, positive going to a fuse, just like always, and we're gonna continue. The only difference is that instead of drawing the two dots and a lever, we're going to draw the two dots, and then we're gonna draw a T. When you draw a T, you're gonna put a circle around it, and then you're gonna continue this. This is then going to go into a load, and then this is going to go into ground. So this is now a complete circuit. What this tells you is that it's a button or a momentary switch, which means it's only going to turn on so long as this button is pressed. Once you let it go, it's going to either stay normally open, which is designated as NO, or normally closed, which is designated as N. C. That's what NO and NC stand for. If you guys ever pull up an old school wiring diagram, you're going to see that some switches say NO and NC, and that's basically what it means. If it's NO, that means perfectly resting the way the car is supposed to be, that switch is normally open. If you have something that's always running or something that turns on as soon as a key is on, sometimes it'll designate that the switch is normally closed. In the case of this momentary switch, you can't keep it normally closed, so I would designate this as normally open. One big thing that you guys gotta know is that each one of these switches has an amp rating. The heavier duty switches usually have it printed somewhere on the switch itself, and the light duty switches usually don't have anything on them at all. Switches can range anywhere from two amps all the way to 15 amps and 25 amps. This one in particular right here is actually a heavier duty switch and this one is rated at 15 amps. So the next question that comes up is what if I wanna use a light duty switch because I like the way it looks, I like the way it feels, but I wanna power up something like headlights or fans or a fuel pump. What do I do then? And the answer to that is to actually add on a relay to your circuit. 